hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new up in this place my name is Ntwani Ngomani and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for clicking on this video we are on the first video of the London edition of the living the dream series I hope you guys enjoy this episode and if you like this content or you came across this video somehow and you really enjoy what we do here please do hit the subscribe button it is absolutely free don't forget to like this video it really helps us with the algorithm and to get everyone who is interested in this type of conversations to actually have access to the video so please do like guys please do share with your friends especially people who are considering moving abroad in the next 12 months so without any further ado let me get on to today's video my table is the side guys and this is the tripod and everything so if you see me doing this it's just because my notes are here so yeah man uh, i have my notes down here with me and that's what i'm going to be referring to also how cute is this guys this is my recruiter i think i'll discuss this in an upcoming video um about getting a job through a recruiter this was my recruiter and they basically gave us this before we left south africa so this is pretty cool um cool so when i decided to move abroad i just want to say from the onset that that decision was not i woke up one morning and i knew um that i'm gonna do this it was there was a lot of war in in and within me like one part of me was like we want to do this we really want to travel we did we really want to work abroad and a part of me was just like but my family is here but i can't leave my mom i can't leave my dad i can't leave my brothers um what am I going to do in a foreign world, in a foreign country by myself, you know? Um, like, I had so much fear. And I really just want to talk through that because I know that, especially now with APC results coming out, um, a lot of recruiters are now starting to look at who's in third year, who can we recruit to this company, who can we move abroad. And also people just, trainees in themselves, are looking at what can I do um, after this article uh, period is over. So I really just want to talk through my journey and my considerations of deciding to actually move abroad and how then I came to the conclusion to actually just pack my bags and move regardless of all the fears um, that I felt at the time. The first thing that was like, that really caused a lot of back and forth within me was my family. And if you know me, like, guys, I am big on family, okay? Like, my family is everything. Um, so I had a bit, not a bit even, I had a lot of fear about leaving them in South Africa and coming to, to the UK alone. So um, when I was still considering, I then um, spoke to a good friend of mine. I'm like, dude, I really want to go abroad, but I don't want to leave my mom. What if something happens to them and I can't come back? Or what if something happens and i need to be there for my brothers or i need to be there for my mom or my dad and i can't because not only i don't know if i'll even have the money but i'll have to fly for 12 hours first before i can get home and be with my family like my mind was running a lot on what if there's a tragic event that happens at home and i'm not there what if someone passes away like I had so much fear guys <laughs> i had so much fear it almost crippled me and i almost wrote off the idea of moving abroad because it was just so fearful so that was the first thing for me and the way i went on about this was to speak to my parents honestly and tell them guys there is an opportunity for me to move abroad um and i think now in my career is the perfect time to do that so i just I, I don't know let's talk about this are you guys okay are you guys fine and my parents were really um accepting of the fact that you know it, it is my dream this is what i want to do and they gave me the go ahead and i felt better after my dad was like you know what we put you through school so you can have 
a choice. We'll put you through school so you can have opportunities. So you're able to take up these opportunities as they come to you. So it wouldn't be fair for us to expect you to not take an opportunity just because something might happen to us. Anything can happen at any time. Even if you're in Joburg, something could happen and you still won't be there. So it doesn't really matter. And that's, yeah, that's, that's how I overcame that. Uh, but I think having grown up with with both my parents for all my life, it was really a very difficult decision. But in terms of family, um, they accepted it. They gave me their blessing, prayed for me. And I think after that, I was like, okay, I can do this. The second thing that I considered when I moved abroad was the nature of the job. Now, <laughs> With this one, guys, if you're moving from South Africa in audit as a trainee, you really do not want to do audit again. And listen, if, if you are in that position yourself, you're like, I really don't want to do audit anymore. I really get it. It is exactly the same position that I was in um before i came here i was like i've been doing audit for three years i really don't want to do this thing anymore but the thing with me was that i really wanted to travel i really wanted to live abroad and the only viable option for me to do that was to go through audit so needless to say guys i am still <laughs> in audit i am still in an audit role and i think it's one of those sacrifices you're just gonna have to make man i mean at the end of the day the only thing you really know is audit and while i was still deciding i spoke to a lot of people i think that's my next point to actually speak to people who have moved before i spoke to a lot of people who had moved and like dude is there any way i can come abroad and not be in audit like can i join the advisory team or something like that and it was just not as easy as moving through audit because the audit skill is what is in um, demand abroad. So I had a lot of tug of war within me because I wanted to move abroad, one, um, but I didn't want to be in audit. And the only way I could move abroad was if I take on an audit role. At the end of the day, I just had to make the trade off. I just had to make the decision whether my desire to travel and live in a different country was higher than being in audit. That's what you need to decide between, right? So for me, I was okay with being in audit and fulfilling my desire to travel and live in a different country. Then if obviously your desire to leave audit is greater than your desire to travel, then by all means, please stay in South Africa and do something else. Because I promise you, audit is audit everywhere you go. It's the same, guys. Deadlines are there, clients are there, partners are there, review notes are there, business season is there. So if you feel like you don't want to do audit anymore, um, and you know you are happy to sacrifice the traveling portion of it or living abroad part of it, then you can you can decide to stay in South Africa. But I decided that my desire and my willingness to experience a new country and travel and see other cultures and all of those things um, was far much greater than you know audit or audit stress, if I want to put it that way, or being in the audit space. So I then decided to take up um, the, the, the position that I'm in now. So the next point um, that I was actually coming to is to speak to the people who moved. And I think this helped me in a lot of ways. The one person I spoke to was Khanya. You guys know Khanya. Um, she is a, a qualified CA. She's lived in the US for about three years, came back to South Africa. So I spoke to her a lot. I was like, dude, like, I really want to move abroad, but I really don't want to do audit. And she was like, look, if it's been your dream to move abroad, child, like, just go. If you don't have to go for the rest of your life, that's another thing with this thing. Like, this is not the rest of your life. You can just go for two years, go for three years, and then quit audit if you don't like it, you know, but you would have had the opportunity to travel and the opportunity to live abroad because this opportunity is really, really scarce, guys. For people our age, people, 
in other fields it's just not as easy not even in other fields even in the ca industry like outside of audit it's just a bit more difficult to move abroad so if you still have the opportunity you don't have the responsibility you don't have anything tying you down to one country i would highly recommend um taking up the opportunity and travel yes it's an audit but it's not the rest of your life guys it's just a year or two experience a different culture you never know maybe the firm you're gonna go into has a much um lighter environment you know maybe the work environment is nicer which it is for me in the firm that i work with much better than where i was so that is a whole entire conversation on its own but the point here is to speak to people who have moved to the country that you want to move in especially people who have moved in similar positions that you're also moving in and talk about how their experience is like you know um obviously they would be able to then give you that comparison between this is what happens in south africa this is what happens this side you know and then you can decide from there i think speaking to people who have done this before it's far much better than trying to figure out yourself whether ordered travel ordered new country the last point is the idea of remote international work and i don't want to lie to you like i considered remote international work so remote international work is um provided mainly by the likes of makosi cross uh, cross consulting sapro where you work with international clients or get international exposure while you are in south africa so you're working remotely on an international client right um needless to say it is still in order so you're still auditing the the clients but the only difference is that you are stationed in south africa so it, it, it if you if you were somebody who's worried about family and all of that stuff then that would cover that because you could work literally from your house with your family and still get the international experience but the reason why personally for me i didn't consider that or i didn't end up going with that is because i wanted a personal experience to this international experience thing i don't know if that makes sense but let me explain so for me right staying in south africa and working on international clients only elevated one part of my life or one area of my life which was my career it would look good on my cv to say i've actually worked with this u.s company or i've audited this u.s company that would look great but as a person as an individual i would not have the experience of living in the u.s you know what i mean so for me it was not just a career decision to move here it was also a personal from a personal experience perspective because i didn't want to be um somebody who has the international experience on my cv but i don't have the international experience personally so i wanted to get on a plane and leave the country and experience the people the culture the food you know like make new friends type of vibe and look i'm not saying you can't make friends if you're sitting in south africa but it's a whole lot of different game okay it's a whole lot of things that you don't experience because you're not physically there so for me i wanted this to be more of a personal experience listen me coming here is not even about audit <laughs> I, I just want to put this out there it's not even about audit it's not even about the job that i do it's about the personal experience of making new friends and meeting new people experiencing new food new weather speaking about weather when i chose this position to shoot this video the light the sun was out and it looked so good and i thought how hey, this would look good on my background but now it's just dark but anyway as i was still saying this was a personal experience so for me remote international work didn't give really give me that benefit in my personal space as i wanted so that's why i ended up deciding to actually do the whole moving thing and it was a lot but i at this point guys i can't i can't say i regret it um there's nothing i'd do differently um i think and i feel that i made the right decision and i think anybody who is still 
you know like considering moving abroad um in my honest opinion i think it is a great move of all the people that i spoke to that had already um moved every one of them said dude you need to do this do this if you have the opportunity do it because it, it's it's not something that's gonna come by every day <laughs> you know um at some point in your life you'll want to settle down you want to start a family and it's not just as it's not as flexible anymore to just like country hop type of thing so if you're considering doing it uh straight after your articles i would highly recommend to do it um and look i'm not looking down on remote international work obviously if you have commitments that are keeping you in a certain country and you can't physically move to another country by all means please do international ex um, a remote international experience because that way at least your cv looks great um and and the experience you get there will will definitely um uh, pioneer your career and move your career in a very different direction to somebody who who doesn't have the international experience so that is the end of the video and that is how i then decided to um to move abroad that's how i then decided to move abroad and came to the final decision that i am moving so family for me the dynamics of audit travel i don't want to do audit anymore but i want to travel and all of those things man really did play a factor um so if you're considering it definitely do it thank you guys so much for watching if you have not subscribed already please do hit the subscribe button below guys i'll see you guys in my next video Mwah.